plain water. Coal, to which I'm going to add some citric acid. So there's about half a teaspoon in there. Then I'm going to add the wool, which has already been washed. So here it is, all washed in locks in almost boiling water as this is a Polworth Cross Marina. To this I'm going to add some washed alpaca locks which have been done the same way. So this is the pot loaded up. It's uh, got all of the wool in the middle and uh, it spreads out to the outside and then just round the edges I've put some locks of the alpaca so that when I dip the dye in the alpaca will get the same colours as some of the wool. So at this point because I want sort of blues and greens and sort of swirly colours I'm going to add some of this which is it's called jade um, and this is a spectrum dye which I don't think you can get anymore. You certainly wouldn't be able to get it at £1.30 so it tells you how old this stuff is. So I'm going to use my little spatula which looks like that and I'm just going to add what I think is necessary for this amount of wool just based on past experience. So here I have the dye and the little pot that I'm going to put it into. So. There's still a little blue dye in there, but that's fine because it's going to be that sort of colour anyway. So all I'm going to use is that much dye, which only knows how much that is. I don't think my scales would even weigh it. So to that I'm going to add some hot water and then stir it up so that we can get it to dissolve. So here's my spatula and you can see this is quite a, a vibrant green, so I might call it turquoise but it's not as difficult to set as a turquoise. So I'm just going to pour this down one side of this dye pot and I'm just literally dripping it along the edge. So I don't want it to spread right across the middle of this dye pot. I'm going to leave a little bit in there in case I need to top it up later. So then I use my cocktail stirrer, for which we don't use it for cocktails, obviously. I just push this fibre down. The temperature on the pot at the moment is on very low because I want this to heat up really gently. I don't want it to boil and I want it to have a good long slow time to develop the colour through. And I don't want to felt these locks either so anything that's going to be agitated a huge amount might result in that. So just very gently pushing the fleece down. So that's about a third of the pot covered in this blue blue green dye. I'm just going to leave that one for a minute and then I'm going to mix up another colour which in this case is going to be a much brighter blue. So this is again a spectrum dye and this is the blue that I'm going to use. I don't know if you can see how much is in that. Very little. Again maybe two little spatula fulls and again I'm going to mix it with boiling water. So this is the blue dye made up and as you can see it is quite a, a dense blue. So I'm going to add this just to the sort of top edge of this dye bath. Blue tends to take up quite late so if you have blue mixed with another colour the other colour will dominate for quite some time before it starts um, letting the blue take over. So don't be surprised if you've mixed something like a, a red and a blue together and suddenly it looks very reddy, pinky colour. Because the blue might come in quite a bit later than you expect. So I'm just pushing the edge of that down. I'm letting it bleed into the green a little bit as well because I want that to change that colour 
just a little bit round the edges there. So that's two colours in there. So for my third one, I'm going to add probably something a little bit on the purpley, reddy sort of scale. So that the green, uh, where it touches the red, will give a sort of brownie colour. And where the red touches the blue, it'll give a sort of purpley colour. So it's a bit like mixing paints, really. So I'm just going to mix the red one up. So for this colour I've mixed two different dyes together. So this one's a Landscapes Gravillia which gives you a very pinky colour and then this one's a Spectrum Crimson which uh, is quite a nice colour. It's very slightly towards the orangey scale. So this is the colour that I've ended up with. As you can see it is quite vibrant. So this one is going to go down this side. The thing I like about doing these dies is you're never quite sure what you're going to get. So it's always, you get some really happy accidents. If you make a mistake and it comes out a different colour then I'm not too worried. It's still going to be useful for something. And even if you don't like the colour yourself, one of your friends will. So there's always something that you get out of a, this sort of experimentation, even if it's not quite what you expected. But having done this quite a few times now, I've got a very good idea of what I will get. And uh, we just leave that there now. So I'm not going to mess around with that anymore. I'm just going to leave it as it is. I've got little bits of some of the dye left over from the ones that I've mixed. So if I want to add little touches of really bright spot colour, I can do that after this one's taken. So I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. I'm going to leave this for maybe 20 minutes and see what it looks like. So I'm only turning the cooker half up. I don't want this to boil, I just want it to gradually get warmer and warmer. So this is some of the fleece that I dyed the first time round with this pot method. So if you look to this side, just here, you can see that this very pale wool, I put that in right towards the end of the um, process because there was a little bit of colour left in the pot and the fleece that was already dyed didn't look like it was going to take up any more. So I just put those in just to add a few little highlight colours. So they'll get blended in when I come to comb it. So you can see the various shading. And this is where the two colours or three colours blend into each other. So the joy of this is that you don't get absolutely solid one colour. You get a variety of shades. This seems to be coming up to me on this camera like it's more pink than it really is. It's um, It's got quite some deep, deep dark magentas, slightly orangey colours in the pink, but uh, I'll take some photos outside later and we'll see what they look like. So this is how the dye pot is developing at the moment. I really like the way this is looking. It's um, It looks a bit like a, a sort of dark skies kind of um, nebula type colours which I really like. So I'm not going to mess around with it, I'm not going to stir it or anything like that, I'm just going to leave it as it is and gradually increase the heat a little bit. Okay, so we're about uh, 15 minutes into the process. Now the wool that was in the pot was looking very dark, it looked like there was um, not a lot of the green left. So I added some more of the jade and a little bit more of the pinky uh, scarlet colour and then I've added extra fibre to it so the fibre that I've just put in is taking up the extra dye that I've just put in plus a little bit of the shading of some of the other as well so this is going to give me lighter colours on top of the darks that I've already got underneath so I'm just going to add a few more little bunches of locks I'm going to push these down so now we're getting the sort of mauvey colours coming through and still some of that nice green showing up as well. Now if your dye doesn't contain any setting agent like acetic acid or citric acid you may have to add a little bit more if you're adding dye to it. So just mix it in with the dye powder when you put the water in with it. 
and that will give it the added sticking quality that you need for it to penetrate the wool. So this is looking really quite sweet now. I'm really getting quite excited about how this is. So I'm going to leave it alone again. I've turned the heat up. So now I'm going to let this come up to a, not a rolling boil, but just a, a gentle simmer. And I've put the timer on for 20 minutes. So in about 15 minutes time, I'll check it and see what it looks like. And if it looks like the dye's exhausted, I'll put another white lock in and see whether or not that takes any dye up. And that should give me an indication of whether it's ready or not. Look at these colours, aren't they gorgeous? Really looking forward to seeing this when it comes out of the pot. Okay, so my oven timer has gone off, which was 20 minutes it was set for. You can see it's quite hot now, there's a lot of steam around. It's still got quite a lot of dye in the pot. So if you look down here, you can't see the bottom, it's still quite dark. So I'm going to add a few extra pieces of fibre just to mop up that excess dye and then uh, they'll come out a lot paler than the rest of it and I'm going to give it another 10 minutes. So now you can see this turquoise is really taking up nearly always the last thing to take the dye so it's no surprise that it's still got quite a lot in there so I'm really happy with the way this is coming out I think just to be on the safe side what I'll probably do as well is add another little bit of um, mixed up citric acid just to make sure that it does actually take properly. It's always quite a difficult one, these sort of greeny turquoisey colours. So I'm just going to give that an added little extra oomph. Okay, so this is the dye pot as it stands at the moment. So it's not quite clear, but it's not far off it, so it's enough for me at the moment. So I'm going to take the wool out of the dye pot and um, I'm going to show you what I do with it after that. Okay, so I'm just going to get a bowl and, um, and a potato masher that I use for my dye, and I'll get this fibre out. Turn the heat off first. So again, I'm only using um, utensils that I keep for dyeing for this. You don't use them for anything else. So I wouldn't then go and mash the spots, otherwise you'd end up with green spots and probably food poisoning. So I'm just going to push the potato masher underneath the fibre and lift it out. That's all the water drain off. And you can see it's not far off clear. And straight into the bowl. see what's left in the bowl, very pale sort of greeny colour. Now I could if I wanted to use this as a base for another dye pod but um, I don't want to use this at the moment so I'm just going to pull this out now. I tend to throw it on the garden, so at the back of the shrubbery so it's not going down into the drains. So these are the colours that I've got out of this dye pot. I'll show another shot later on of them in a bit better light when it's cooled off. So I'm going to leave this in the bowl now for about half an hour to let the fibre cool right off and then I'm going to rinse, rinse it off just in tepid water with no soapy stuff in it and just very gently swish it around just so that it doesn't open the locks up too much so that I can keep the formation ready for combing. So 
So I'm going to make a slightly different technique on this one because um, I don't really want to have something so dense. I want something that's a little bit lighter in colour just to offset what I've already done. So first thing I've done is put some citric acid in. I'm going to mix up a very weak solution of a pale blue. I'm going to put that in and then I'll put the fibre in and I've got pretty much only alpaca left. So it doesn't take the dye quite as well as wool will. It's a bit more muted and because it's also a sort of caramel colour as well, it won't take the dye really brightly. So it'll be ideal for this kind of method. So I'll just go and get the alpaca. So first off I'm going to add the dye and then I'm going to put the alpaca in. So I just want this to be one sort of base colour, not blocked off by any of the fibre being in the way. So I've only put a tiny amount of dye in. It's quite a nice clear blue this, although it won't look quite so clear with the alpaca being the colour it is. So when I put this in, I'm going to put it in so that the alpaca is pointing in towards the middle with the tips. I don't want it to swirl around too much. going to leave that for a little while and let that blue take up and then I'm going to add patches of other colours to it. I might have to add a little bit more blue I think. Just going to tip it right down the edge here. Pulling the wool aside like this, it allows the dye to creep underneath. Move it a little bit backwards and forwards just to get it to penetrate. So this water's still quite cool, it's just vaguely warm at the moment. And again, these gloves I don't use them for anything else except dyeing wool and washing wool. I don't use them to then peel the spuds with. So we're just going to leave that for maybe five minutes or so to let that blue penetrate. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit and then decide what colours I'm going to add to it. Okay, so I've just added some more fibre to this and I've turned the temperature up a bit. So I'm now going to add some more colours to it. So the first one I'm going to put in is a landscape's plum and then I'm going to use a spectrum green, which is quite a clear green. It's quite nice. So this is the green, so I'm just going to add it over this side. So I'm not being very specific with this, I'm just putting a few little drops in because I want this to permeate by itself to a degree. And then this is the plum, so I've only made up small amounts at the moment because I'll probably add more colours to it or more densities to it as time goes by. I've reserved a little bit of fleece as well of uh, alpaca just to add later in the process if I feel the need. Go with the flow. So 
by pushing it down at the edges like this it clears a little space for the dye to go down underneath as well so the different layers will still have some of the dye penetration rinse that green off because I don't really want to put it in with this red. I'm going to leave that for a little while and um, then I'll add a little bit more of the original blue in a bit denser colour and uh, we'll see how it's looking after that. Okay, so this is what it's looking like after about 10-12 minutes. So I'm going to add some more of the blue just into the centre and to the right hand side a little bit, but mainly to the right side. So this is fairly concentrated dye, I haven't diluted it down too much. I'm just pushing down at the edge a little bit into the green just to let that bleed through a little. Just put a little channel in there and then a little bit of added pushing towards the middle. I don't want that middle bit to get too dark. Okay, so I'm going to turn the heat up again a little bit. So I'm going to give that another five, five minutes or so and see what it looks like. Okay, so we're five minutes in and I want to put some yellow in this. Uh, the yellow should mix nicely with the blue to give more of a sort of brighter green. I'm going to try and keep it sort of into one little section really. So I'm going to put another added little bit of fleece in. This is just a small amount of this coloured alpaca. We'll push that down. So on top of this I'm going to add the yellow. So it's a spectrum yellow and I've added a little bit more citric acid to it as it doesn't have its own acid fix. So you can see this is quite a bright yellow. Just going to pull this onto here. So again, I'm not pushing it around too much. I don't want it to affect too much of the other colour around it. It'll go down underneath this and it should also bleed a little bit into the blue and into the green that's underneath it so it'll change those colours a little bit as well. So I'm going to give this another 15 minutes and then that'll be it done. So this is the fleece that I did earlier and uh, it's been sitting cooling. So I'm going to pull it out of this bowl. I'm going to fill the bowl up just with some vaguely warm water as this is still a little bit warm. The water is very hot here. So 
I'm not going to agitate it too much. All I'm trying to do is get out any extra dye that might be left in it, which there shouldn't be any. So we'll just give this a push under. Pull it to one side. I don't know if you can see that. There's a very tiny amount of a pale green still in there. Another In that. If I was really worried about that and I thought it was going to cause a problem, I would leave it to soak overnight with about a teaspoon and a half of a concentrated acetic acid. And uh, the stuff I tend to use if I'm doing it is this, which you can get from the chemist. You have to order it and sign for it. 33% acetic acid and it needs very, very little. So this is the fleece that I've just rinsed out, laid outside to dry, and this is the one that I did earlier, and already it's nearly dried out, and you can see that beautiful crimp. So tomorrow it'll be calming day. So this is the finished fibre. So the ones with the yellow and the green on the right hand side is the last one that I did. This is the first one that you saw me do, and this is the one that I did before I started filming. And as you can see, this is really easy to manage. You can uh, open the fleece out. It's not cotted. It's not matted. It's just beautiful, beautiful fibre. 